that was me in the Clark's Fork of the Yellowstone. And now this is me up on the high divide in the foothills of the Pryor Mountains. It is dry and it is hot. <laughs> there is a thunderstorm brewing. That's coming in off of the Beartooth. But I'm dropping south into Wyoming. I'm going to try to stay at altitude as long as possible. This nearly concludes the Montana section. And from there, slip over, maybe corner South Dakota and find the Black Hills one more time and back to the Ozarks. But I'm not going to get anywhere sitting here. <laughs> Hey Siri, find me a campground outside of Lovell, Wyoming. Starting route to Horseshoe Bend Campgrounds. Head south on Ash Street. I fed Slimbo some unleaded gas with ethanol in it yesterday. He's been mad at me ever since. All right, here we are. Sitting at a park bench just out of the city of Loveland, Colorado. Uh, no, Lovell, Wyoming. Lovell, <laughs> not Loveland. We were talking about Loveland. Yeah. Here we are, sitting in a park with uh, a new friend that I just made here. This is Lincoln. Hey, everybody. And Lincoln is um, kind of, well, I'm not going to say He's put me to shame, but let's just say he has outdistanced me. And not only has he outdistanced me, he's done it on that. So tell us about your journey. I, I started in Pennsylvania on April 30th, left my house, uh, pretty much rode out towards Chicago. Then I headed up northwest through Madison, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, St. Paul, uh, Fargo, North Dakota, and somewhere right in the middle of North Dakota, I crossed up into Saskatchewan, which is probably the hardest part of the trip. It's very flat and windy out there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wound up toward Edmonton and jumped on the Alaska Highway and rode my way all the way up to Anchorage. Is that right? Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> yep. And then from there, I bounced down to the Kenai Peninsula and I caught a ferry, gave myself a week off and I took the boat from Homer, Alaska down to Bellingham, Washington. And now I'm on my way home. I've been riding since Bellingham. I'm about a thousand miles back in and I probably got about another 2,500 to go maybe. Yeah. But over 6,000 miles in total distance yeah. to date. Yeah. So it'll be eight or nine. Close. I can tell you exactly. 6180 something. <laughs> yeah, so coming up on 6200 miles. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, <laughs> I always like to understand what the spark is in people that make them go ahead and grab that thing. You know, to do that thing, you've obviously thought about it. But you did more than that. You did it. A lot of people think about it, but they don't do it. What what prompted you? Um, I'm always kind of pushing my limits. You never really know what your limits are until you push yourself just a little too far. Okay. And uh, I keep raising that bar, taking longer trips, going further from home, just further into the wilderness. And 
don't think I've hit that limit yet. Maybe I have to do something harder next time. <laughs> but that and uh, just you watch the news in this country and you'd swear everybody wants to kill each other. And this trip was kind of to restore my faith in humanity. You know, I, I can say the same thing. I know that the news is not accurate. I'm not going to say it's fake news, but they are sensationalizing everything and there are troubled spots no doubt but I haven't seen it and I've got 2600 miles on my motorcycle and I've encountered people similar to yourself maybe not quite so game <laughs> but uh, just good people going yeah. about life Everybody and I run into, red states, blue states, doesn't matter. Everybody has treated me wonderfully this whole trip. Just the, the hospitality I've been shown. I've had complete strangers welcome me into their home, give me a bed for a night. And that's kind of what it's all about. I mean, we all want the same stuff. We all want to eat every day. We all want a roof over our heads. And we got to get back to realizing that. We're a united country. We don't need to be fighting with each other. Amen. I'll say that. And again, I say, amen. I love the idea. It's not so much exploring for me because I've made this trip on bike before. But this time, because I don't have a specific destination or a timeline, when I wake up every morning, I have a general idea but I am unsure, absolutely unsure, of where I'm going to end up. Everywhere that that has taken me has been just within reach of good people. I appreciate it, Lincoln. You're taking the time with me to share your story because it's yeah, well, thank you too. part I, of our story. I could talk right? about this stuff all day. <laughs> I'm sure you could too. So you it's are a... heading on down to Colorado, I gather. Yeah, I used to live in Denver, so I'm heading down there. I'm gonna spend a few days, maybe a week, give myself a rest, visit with a bunch of old friends, and then from there it's maybe another three plus weeks back to my house, and, yeah. and then I gotta get back to work because somebody's gotta pay for all this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, fortunately for me, um, I'm at the station in life now where work is an option. Here's another little tidbit to anyone who might be interested in trying to figure out a way to escape, right? Don't build yourself a trap in the first <laughs> place. Yeah. That you won't have to escape. I am 64. I have zero debt and zero bills. We own our house, we own all our vehicles, I own my bike. Our bills consist of subsistence. And if you're careful with that, it doesn't cost all that much. So, it's kind of the same thing. I don't, the lack of a dependency on money is freedom. Don't build a trap. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm self employed, so I work as much as I want to or need to and nobody can tell me I can't take time off so this was the year where you know I've got enough to cover my expenses on this trip I'm gonna do it I never got married never had kids and my house is paid for too so oh, okay I'm not free from spending money I got some bills back home but I've got less expenses than your average person just because of the lifestyle choices I've made all right thanks Lincoln Cool, dude. Oh, thank you.